Hi, welcome to Thor Labs. My name is Matt, and today I'll be discussing how to set up a camera and receive images from a Visual Studio console application written in C Sharp. For this demonstration, I have here an LED controller, an LED with mounted diffuser, a sample, and a monochrome camera with attached imaging lenses. With this setup, we'll pulse the LED with the LED controller and use the TTL output to request a series of images from the camera. So first, let's set up our LED controller. It's good practice to set the driver current limit when working with LED sources. This driver automatically detected the max current limit for this particular LED. However, it's also a good idea to set a user-defined limit for the application. In this case, we're going to use a user current limit of 100 milliamps. This driver provides a few different modes of operation for pulsed output. The two that provide the TTL output needed for this application are PWM mode, which is used if you have a known frequency and duty cycle, and pulsed mode, which is used if you have a known on-off time for your diode. For this application, we'll be using pulse mode, and here we're going to set the LED brightness to be 100% of the user-defined current limit. The LED on time here is going to be set to 0.25 milliseconds, and this is typically set to be slightly greater than the expected exposure time of the camera, and this is to account for any timing delays that might be present in the system. The off time is going to be set to 1000 milliseconds, and this is going to represent the time between images from the camera. And here we're going to set the counts to 5, which is going to be the number of times the LED will be pulsed, and is also the number of images we'll receive from the camera. And when we're ready to pulse the LED, we'll press this button in the corner. Next, the TTL output of the LED controller needs to be connected to the input of the camera. So here I'll connect an SMA cable to the mod in out of the LED controller. And here I'll connect the MMCX connector to the trigger input of the camera. And now we can begin writing the code to capture the images from the camera. In front of me, I have a blank Visual Studio console application that I've titled Camera Hardware Triggering. In the project properties, I have the .NET framework set to 4.7.2, and the platform target set to x64 for 64-bit libraries. The libraries that we'll be using for this application can be found in the Scientific Camera Interfaces folder, which is in the Camera Software Installation location. By default, this is a zip file and will need to be unzipped prior to accessing the libraries. Once extracted, the libraries shown on the right can be referenced in Visual Studio. Along with the system.drawing assembly that will be used for handling the bitmaps that are received from the camera. We will also need to manually copy some of the DLLs directly into the Visual Studio Project output directory. We'll be copying the highlighted files. And because this is a monochrome camera, we'll be omitting any of the libraries involving polarization processing or color processing. Once the DLLs are referenced and added, we're going to import the following libraries into the code. Before we can access the camera and begin capturing images, we need to create an instance of the ITL camera SDK. This SDK encapsulates the methods that are used for discovering available cameras and opening the camera. So let's go ahead and create a variable called SDK that is of type ITL camera SDK and assign this using the OpenTL camera SDK method. Next, let's create an iList variable called serial numbers, and this will hold any of the serial numbers of the cameras connected to the PC. And this will be assigned using the discover available cameras method from the SDK. Let's go ahead and print to console the number of available cameras that were found.
And then let's use an if statement to check that the size of this returned list is not zero. If it is zero, that means there wasn't any cameras found and we need to close the program. In this case, let's print that there were no cameras found and then call return to terminate. If there were cameras found, then we can go ahead and initialize an ITL camera variable that we're going to call cam. And this is going to be assigned using the open camera method from the SDK. This method takes the serial number input as a string, as well as a boolean that represents if diagnostic messages are enabled on the camera. In this case, we're going to set this to false. Now that the camera is open, we can start setting camera parameters using the properties accessed through this initialized cam variable. So let's start with the exposure time. Here we're setting the exposure time to be 200 microseconds, which is slightly less than the LED on time that we set previously. Next we can set the frames per trigger property for the camera. And this is going to set the number of images that we want to receive on the receipt of a software or hardware trigger. We only want one image at a time, so we're just going to set this to one. For some cameras, a particular feature might only be available on some models. Features that don't apply to the entire camera line will have a corresponding is supported method or property. For example, if we wanted to check if the camera we're using has a hardware trigger, we can use the get is operation mode supported method. So let's set up an if statement that checks if this is true. So if the camera supports triggering, we'll print that to the console, and then we'll set the operation mode to hardware triggering. If hardware triggering is not supported, let's also print that to console and then terminate the program. To prepare a camera to take an image, we'll need to call the arm method. And because we want the program to wait while image capture is being triggered by our LED controller, we're going to need a while loop that continuously pulls the camera for available frames. So to do this, we're first going to set up a variable that's going to act as a counter for the number of images captured. And in a while loop, we want to check if we've received the desired number of images. Here we want five images, so we're going to check in the loop condition that the number of images required is less than five. Before the loop starts, let's also print to console that we're waiting for images. And this will just help to show some of the program flow while we're watching the console output. In the body of the loop, we can check if the camera has any images available by using the number of queued frames property. So let's use an if statement to check if this property is greater than zero. And if this returns false, meaning no images are available, then we're going to pause the loop for about 50 milliseconds. Images returned from the camera are received as the frame type, so let's go ahead and initialize a new frame variable and assign this using the get pending frame or null method. If there were no errors, this variable will contain the most recent image data, however we should also check that this wasn't returned as null. 
This frame can be converted into a bitmap by calling the toBitmap method from the image data property. So let's create a new bitmap variable called image and assign this. We can then save this to our PC by calling the save method from this image variable. This method takes a string as an input, and here the string is going to represent the file name of the image to be saved. If no path is provided, then the default save directory is going to be the output directory of our program. Now that an image is received, let's increment the counter that we had initialized earlier. And we can print a message to the console to show this. Once we're done acquiring image, we can go ahead and clean up our camera resources. Let's start by calling the disarm method from the camera. And then we can call dispose on the camera and SDK variables. And one last print to console just to show that the camera is closing. Now let's go ahead and run our program and see what the console outputs. Here we can see that the camera is found, hardware triggering is supported, and now it's waiting for an image. So now I'm going to turn on the LED controller and start the pulses. And we can see that the images are coming in, we get our fifth image, and then the camera closes. Now let's check the received images in our project output directory. And here we can see the five images that were saved by the program. Let's go ahead and open the first one. And here you can see the test target that we chose as our sample. I hope this helps you in your application. If you have any questions, feel free to contact tech support.